Hi everybody, my name is Bailey and I am the founder of Ring Crush and this is my YouTube series, The Million Dollar Etsy Shop. Today I am going over how I edit in Lightroom, how I retouch my jewelry photos for e-commerce. Um, so these are going to be your typical white background photos. Um, uh, it's just so you know, these aren't going to be 100% white, but Amazon does accept these. In general, these will be about 98% white. In general, 100% uh, white is a little bit too stark. Um, and I'll go over that a little bit in the comments if you guys want to know why. Um, this is just a little bit of a design trick. But anyways, we'll go ahead and dive in and explain what I'm doing in these pictures. Just so you know, this is a bit of an advanced tutorial. But if you don't know exactly what's going on, this will still be a good listen. Just if, just if, because you don't know all of the tools I'm using doesn't mean that this is going to be too advanced for you. Um, I do think that um, this is a good listen for anyone of all, um, all skill levels in Photoshop and Lightroom. Um, even if you only know how to crop, <laughs> even if you're just starting with Lightroom and Photoshop, I think uh, this is a good place to start. So... Anyways, let's go ahead and um, dive in. Okay, so one of the things you can see is I'm, um, I'm starting to remove some of these chopsticks that I used to prop up my earrings to make sure that the acetate was perfectly aligned. Um, uh, you'll see me using some different props and stuff that I like to Photoshop out. It just makes it easier to make sure everything is straight and everything in my photos. Um, I actually, sometimes I'll roughly remove it in Lightroom, but then um, I will completely remove it later on in, um, in Photoshop. So another, another thing too that you'll see me doing is making generalized adjustments um, over on the right panel. Um, and what you can do is do a control shift V copy and then a control shift V which pastes everything over. So right now what I'm doing is a uh, adjustment brush which you can you can click up here and the right there's a little um, circle with a dot and you can see the edit and what I'm doing is adjusting. So you can basically paint over I'm painting over this acetate to try to adjust and I'm gonna act actually gonna end up rephotographing this earring because what happened was because it's transparent um, and I like to overexpose my backgrounds to make them white. Um, it it, it overex the, the light was overexposed through the earring, and so I just couldn't get it quite right. Um, the colors just looked a little too fake. It doesn't look like it does in real life. So even though I'm doing a lot of edits here, I end up kind of scrapping this photo later. Um, I will kind of talk through what I'm trying to do, but... In the end, sometimes no amount of adjustments are right and you have to go back to the drawing board. Um, so on this earring, this is an amethyst earring, again, with an acetate detailing. And as you saw that jump, that was a control V paste from my original um, earring that I did. Um, so I did some general shadows and tone curve adjustments on that main earring and just control shift V pasted um, the same adjustments to, to that earring as well. Um, so right now what I'm doing is I'm, the, the white earring is kind of getting, or the white acetate is getting lost in the background. So what I'm doing is I'm doing an adjustment brush and separating the background a little bit from the acetate so that I can adjust the white of the background differently from the acetate of the earring so that it's not lost and it doesn't look as washed out because there does need to be a little bit of contrast between the two and you, there is no slider there's no the computer doesn't know I can't just adjust a shadow or adjust the blacks or anything like that to make this earring stand out against the background I actually have to separate the two and you can use there's probably a hundred different ways to do this but I, I chose to use Lightroom to do this so you can see I painted my adjustment brush on the background I decided to up the exposure of the background which will make it a little bit more white um, so I'm aiming even though my earring is obviously white it's more of a probably 96 percent white and the background's like a 99 percent white so it looks even though they are gray the user or the wearer will still know that they're white but they'll be a little a little bit more contrasty against the background so they don't get lost um, and you can kind of play with the adjustments and then later I'm going to take it back to 
Photoshop and adjust that a little bit more. So right now I'm doing a little bit of rough, um, I'm roughly removing the chopstick that you can see through the reflection. Um, and then I decide that it's a little bit too much work in Lightroom to do it here. So I'm gonna end up doing it in Photoshop. Um, again, the clone brush in Lightroom is a little bit finicky. It's good for light spot removal, um, but for something complex like that, I, I prefer to just come back to it later in Photoshop. Again, I'm doing my Control Shift V and pasting my early adjustments that I made um, in my tone curve and exposure and contrast um, that I'm doing in all of my or I'm going back that I, and adjusting that stuff a little bit. Okay, so now, as you can see, I'm going back between each of my earrings. Um, so what's great about Lightroom is I don't have to completely edit one earring at a time. Um, I like to jump around between earrings because when my mindset kind of gets in the zone with one type of edit, so perhaps like how am I gonna crop everything for Instagram? So right now I'm thinking okay, maybe my next five posts are all going to be square and I want all of the earrings to be arranged and cropped a certain way. I'll go ahead and crop all of those earrings the same way in Lightroom. And then I'll go back and edit the gemstones all separately. Like maybe I need to brighten each gemstone. So I'll go edit gemstone, gemstone, gemstone. And then I'll go and edit the background, 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 background. Um, Lightroom is great for that purpose. So you can jump around between images. Whereas Photoshop, if you're going to dive in and spend 20 minutes on one, one edit, one image, um, and really get into the nitty gritty details, which we'll do at the end of this or the second half of this video, um, that's what I prefer to use Photoshop for. Um, so here I had a little piece of paper that I forgot to move in my, my photo and I'm trying to kind of loosely edit that out. But, um, again, as you can see this, the spot edit brush just isn't really doing the trick. So I'm going to end up doing that in Photoshop. Again, guys, this um, this video is sped up 3x. I'm not really this fast. Um, last video I did 4x, and I thought I was, even now I feel a little rushed explaining everything. But <laughs> I think this video is going to end up being about 30 minutes, which is a little long for a YouTube video. But um, I know that it's a little, it, it goes a little fast explaining everything for you guys. So let me know in the comments if you think I'm, moving too fast or if you think I'm moving too slow um, or, or what, what you guys prefer. And then in the next video, I'll make adjustments to whatever works best for you guys. Okay, so this earring was a little interesting because um, I had issues, which I don't know if my monitor is not color calibrated correctly, which I might need to go back and do, but I had issues with that coral looking right, but I ended up fixing it. Okay, this one was interesting because I had to spend a lot of time on this because the metal was so reflective that I had, it was getting lost kind of similarly to how the zebra acetate piece was. So I had to do a lot of um, brush adjustments to get the metal to look right. So this is one of those cases where so what I'm doing here is I'm, I'm painting. I have my auto mask on down here and I'm, I'm adjusting my shadows, I'm adjusting my whites and my temperature, I'm, I'm warming it up a little bit. I'm kind of just taking this like as a paint, this is definitely an advanced approach. Um, I'm, I'm doing this like a painter would, I'm sort of painting yellows and I'm doing a bunch of different layers um, to fake the reflections, to fake how I think it should look in order to make it not look washed out. Um, and I think it looks pretty good. It, it, it ends up looking a little bit like a render, but it, it's not fake. I'm not lying to the user um, or to the shopper, but um, it does make it look a little bit less washed out against the background. And I think that a really good photographer, someone who's better than me, might have been able to have their lighting set up differently, um, perhaps with some barn doors or something like that. Um, but unfortunately I didn't really want to spend, you know, four hours setting up lighting specifically for this pair of earrings. That's only going to sell for $40. Like it's, it's one of those things when you're in a production mindset, like for photography, like you want to just crank things out 
And as you can see, I'm already, I've already spent, you know, so much time making these and so much time um, photographing these. And I, I, I'm trying to get through all these other photographs. Like you, you just, sometimes it's easier just to Photoshop it. So, and here, um, the topaz, um, these tumbled topazes were a little dull compared to what they look like in real life. So I'm adjusting the shadows and the blacks to get them looking a little softer. Um, and they were a little underexposed and I adjusted that and I'm trying to match the metal around the bezel to the metal on the bottom piece so that it doesn't look as contrasty because for some reason it just doesn't look like it does in real life. Um, again, like I mentioned in my last video, I don't like to Photoshop things to make them seem better than they are in real life. I like to Photoshop things to make them seem accurate to what they look like in real life because I don't think it's fair to your buyer and you're opening up a whole can of worms by if I tried to make this look more blue than it really is, then I'm just going to get returns and I don't want to deal with that later. I just want this to make it as beautiful as it actually is in real life um, without lying to the customer. Um, again here, this one was something I think it was a little overexposed when I shot it, so I had a little trouble um, bringing everything back down. Um, so sometimes it's easier, if you're ever unsure, it's always easier to up your exposure in post-processing than it is to lower your exposure. Um, I mean, as you can see, I actually had the exposure up on the, <laughs> I'll end up lowering it later, but um, in general, if you're unsure, have your exposure set a little bit low. But the rose quartz is always a little tricky for me to edit. Um, and this one, as you can see, for some reason, the left rose quartz is a little dull compared to the right. And I end up editing that to match because it's just the way that they're angled and the way the light is flowing through them. So I edit them to match. Um, in real life, they do match and they should match in the photo. So I do Photoshop that. The bottom brass pieces came out a little green and a little washed out. And I had a really hard time getting these to look right. And I still think that they don't look right. Um, and this is another piece that I'm going to end up re-photographing. Um, let me make sure I am recording. I am recording. Um, so this is one that you won't see me editing in Photoshop, um, but I am spending a bit of time in Lightroom. And I think I'm going to end up re-photographing perhaps on a different background. I think the fact that there's so much white coming through the texture um, I'm not sure. I think that maybe the light needs to be angled differently and maybe it's a little overexposed. Um, and maybe there's a lot of issues with the metal. Maybe the metal wasn't polished right. Um, I don't know. Photography is definitely one of those things, garbage in, garbage out. So I think the fact that I had a little bit of a quality issue with these brass pieces, um, gold plated brass pieces, like maybe the gold plating was a little messed up and me trying to fix it in here um, in Photoshop or in Lightroom, I mean is just ends up being more work than it's worth and sometimes it's better to just make the piece over again than trying to fix it here so anyways i gave up and moved on i, I might come back to it later we'll see but all right so this next one um again it's a little washed out um i think this one i was able to fix in in lightroom um this is one of those issues i wasn't using my 4k monitor i was using my laptop when i was shooting so um I'm not, you know, I, 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 I'm not a total amateur, but I'm also not the, you know, a hundred percent professional. So I do have, a, you know, a few mistakes that sometimes don't come out a hundred percent perfect, but, um, I can fix these a little bit, but you, you can see this ended up looking a little bit contrast. I think I do end up fixing it. Okay. But you know, you don't want it to look too contrasty and too cartoony, but anyways, so, um, each of these have, has edits that, you know, their own issues that need to be considered. Um, all right, these guys are a little bit interesting because they, let me see what's going on. What am I doing here? Oh, I'm editing my, oh yeah, I'm coming back to this guy that I was so frustrated with. Yeah, my rose quartz. So what I'm doing now is handling these rose quartz and I wasn't sure about it. Hmm. He's <laughs> doing my crops. I like these little earring guys. Those are interesting. The, the gemstone on the left is actually called scapolite and I, I discovered that in Tucson two weeks ago. It grows like tourmaline and um, 
The one on the right is aquamarine and of course pink tourmaline in the center. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find more of the purple, but... Anyways, so that's something I, I'm, I'm frustrated with the crop a little bit because I didn't shoot it far enough back to make a square crop. But of course, I can fix that in Photoshop by just, you know, adjusting it. Um, so these do look a little contrasting. I end up going back and adjusting the shadows down a little bit with an adjustment brush. Um, and I end up lightening the gemstones a little bit with an adjustment brush as well. So here um, I'm, I'm going into the details. On the left hand, upper right side, you can see the navigator. Um, you can zoom in and, and look at the details. Uh, most DSLRs shoot at such a high resolution that you can really zoom in and do some micro editing if you want, especially if you're doing um, something in print, like if you're putting something in a magazine and it's gonna be blown up really large, you might wanna edit out little, little scratches and stuff like that. Um, for this purpose, I don't do anything like that. But um, so in the HSLR th or HSL section down there that you see me adjusting, um, you can individually select colors so and, and edit them without using an adjustment brush, which sometimes can be easier to edit gemstones, um, and sometimes the adjustment brush is easier. So right now I'm using an adjustment brush just to paint to adjust the gemstones to make them lighter, to make them look more accurate to real life, because they are more pastel-y. Um, so you can see it's just shadow plus 20 is all that brush is. Um, and so they look a little bit less contrasty, a little bit softer. And I'm just painting that on each of these pictures, as you can see. Um, if I were to, and then here is a little spot removal, there's a little crust and that's something that I think that's paint maybe we use like a paint seal to seal our gemstones when we gold plate and I think that's what that was and that can come off with nail polish but it's easier to photoshop it so so yeah these scapolites are getting back to their lavender tone which they are in real life and some of these um and so these are I think these are ru raw rubies Raw garnets might be raw rubies. And same thing, you know, upping um, the shadow a little bit to help bring a little bit of light into the gemstone. A little trick. And down here, you can also do the similar thing in the HSL section in the luminance. Um, luminance, and you can pick out the color of the gemstone and bring it up. Um, Sometimes the metal, so these are 24 karat plated, that's why the gold is so dark. Um, but if I wanted to give this an effect of 14 karat, I could adjust the luminance and the saturation of the yellow and the, and the orange and make this look closer to 14 or 18 karat. That's a little trick for jewelry. Um, and if I wanted to make this look rose gold or silver um, without, you know, having to paint or do, you know, just really quickly you can simply change the luminance and the um, saturation and the hue sliders. You can change those and you can make rose gold and silver without much of a fuss. And then you can do the um, control copy or shift control C, shift control V, and then you can copy and paste those edits. And then you have silver and rose gold versions without actually having to produce those items. Um, which is great for e-commerce because it makes your website look really consistent. Um, so if you're doing bridal sets and you don't want to have to re-photograph or you want the rose gold, silver, and um, yellow gold ring to be exactly the same and just the metal, to sh metal color to shift, Lightroom is a great way to do that. And the workflow is really, really fast because you can just control, copy, paste, those edits and um, maybe I'll do, do a tutorial for that at some point to show y'all how to do that. It's, it takes seconds once you get the you know recipe down. But anyways, so I'm going back to some of these and double checking. Sometimes when you stare at the monitor for an hour, your eyes you start to go a little colorblind um, and things don't look right. And sometimes it's good to step away and even come back. I actually split this up into three days this whole edit process because it's it's really bad for you to sit here and try to edit all day 
um, because you start to lose your sense of color and your sense of um, depth and everything else. So, so this, this, this whole video actually took three days. So, um, not total. I mean, I, you know, <laughs> step away and, you know, do other things in the studio and other duties that I had to do. Oh, so this jump ring, the shadow was for some reason looked a little dark. I'm just matching it to the other jump ring. So it doesn't, you know, stand out. Um, that's just a simple shadow adjustment. Um, yeah. So like I said, don't try to bite off more than you can chew in one go. Um, if you get frustrated, sometimes stepping away is the quickest way to get, meet your goal. Um, you know, sometimes it, it's always taken me other people to tell me that you get frustrated and you want to solve it now. Oh, so you see, so you can use this show selected mask overlay at the bottom, um, to see what's going on with your, um, your brush adjustments and, Sometimes your subtle adjustments you don't realize will make little splotches all over your background and stuff. And it's good to visualize what's going on because sometimes you're like, what? This looks so weird. I don't see what's going on, especially when you have like multiple layers of stuff. And it's good to visualize that kind of stuff so you can erase, you know, erase the edges and see where everything is going and, you know, fine, fine tune adjust everything. So here you can see I'm, I'm fine tuning my rose quartz stones to match. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of just feeling out the edits. I'm, a, I'm feeling out the tint and the saturation and it's, it's not working and um, trying the saturation all the way up and seeing what's working. And I'm not sure what I end up settling on, but I guess we can kind of watch me on the right. I think I go with a little bit of yellow t temperature and a little bit of tint, pink tint and then up a little saturation and add a little bit of shadow and lower my contrast because it started to look a little weird and it gets a little closer still looks a little gray to me maybe it gets closer still looks a little gray to me but i mean that's i mean no no customers would be like i'm not going to buy those earrings because the left one looks a, a little gray compared to the right or something i don't know like um it's just me being obsessive but that's the thing about jewelry retouching, though, is like these guys, the guys that do the Rolexes in the Vogue magazine and stuff like they are definitely obsessive. <laughs> like there is definitely an art to it. But, you know, for us that are just trying to do our own thing on e-commerce, like it's, it's as long as you get there, like, you know, 90 percent of the way, I think it's good enough. So um, anything's better than nothing, Espe you know, especially better than just using a point and shoot vibe. So here um you can click up in the right hand corner to see if you are if your white is blown out and what blown out means is it's way overexposed and that red kind of helps you visualize that and i'm pulling my whites back down you can go back in those little spots that you see on my um, picture is those is, are my adjustment brushes so you can click that and see where i had made those edits and you can go back later and make you know fine tune that if you think things look a little weird. So this is the second day I'm going back and looking and be like, you know what, that background is a little too white. So I'm going to go back and adjust it. Um, and same thing. I think I decided that I think I'm just looking at these. I think I decided that the shadows on the metal needed a little bit of adjustment on these guys. They were a little too dark. Shadows are good. People take shadows for granted. And that's why I don't like white boxes because they make everything they eliminate the shadows and i think it makes things look a little too flat but sometimes too too dark um of shadows can make things look a little too too crazy so i don't know there's there's a fine balance but anyways so i think i'm gonna oh I'm, my computer's crashing <laughs> <laughs> just hold hold on a minute my um let's see i'm trying to memory manage everything um anyways so i'm going back to lightroom and photoshop and all of that jazz you definitely don't need both um you don't need either you know if you're a really good photographer like as a lot of people say is like your photos look fine why are you even editing these at all like you don't need to do that and Frankly, it may, maybe wouldn't, you know, affect sales at all, but I like it. It makes me happy, and it's kind of an art form that I think does make my website and my Etsy page look a little bit more professional and a little bit more consistent. Um, 
So it's something that I do enjoy doing. So here what I'm doing is the um, white bar that these are attached to is not something I want in my picture. Um, so I'm going to be removing it. Right now I'm just kind of planning out my composition. So I don't know if I want them next to each other or if I want the earring staggered. But I'm going to be photoshopping out this white bar and I'm going to be rebuilding the background on four of these images. I'm not going to do all of them. Um, because I decided that I was going to reshoot two of them, I believe. But um, so this is a quick way. One of the things you know, I'm not just going to use the magic brush on the left and delete it. You have to refine your edge. Um, so I like to smooth it, smooth it a little bit and feather it just a little bit, and then you can remember those settings. So when I edit the next picture, it'll be similar. Um, one of the things I like to do is copy um, the layer, the background. So in case I screw up, I can you know just copy a piece and bring that back in but anyways so right now what I'm doing is I'm building another layer and I'm trying to find the gradient tool so I'm rebuilding my background um, you can use the eyedropper tool to select grays in your image that already exists so your background is not too different I don't want to do something crazy because the reflections in my earring are from that old background. If I try to do hot pink, it's going to look weird. I mean, it might look okay, but um, I like to keep it pretty close. And you can play around with the gradient tool and drag the line different directions to um, fine tune it. And I want it to be pretty similar, but I want it to be a little bit, you know, cleaner. So I completely rebuild it using the gradient tool and then shift that around to make the um, earring composition a little bit better. A few second edit and completely clean, completely flat, ready for editorial, ready for Amazon, ready for anything. And it's clean. So that's how I do that. So, and I think now I'm just doing some fine tuning on my composition. And I think I might, yeah, I stretched that out just a little bit just because I think it was tilted when I photographed it and it should have been facing me a little bit more. And I, I it feels wrong. They feel kind of twisted. So I'm kind of playing around with that a little bit. And I think I end up yeah, I twist this guy around a little bit. But anyways, um, none of this really matters too much. It's just more of like what looks right to you, you know? Like um, for Instagram, you kind of want to fill out your square as much as possible. So that's why I do the stagger effect because these are, I'm trying to fill as much of the space as possible. So this is the one that I end up, I am editing it here, but I'm not happy with it. Um, the discs are a little too blown out. Um, the rose quartz looks okay, but anyways, I'll, I'm going to do this edit again and show y'all how to remove that background. Um, so I'm using the combination of the... Oh, I end up editing this one a little different um, because those discs were so blown out that I was losing my edge. I don't know if you can see there's a three-dimensional um, edge to these discs and... I just couldn't do the same background removal to get this to work. So I had to kind of, I had to kind of do this a little differently. Um, so I, I, there's a hundred different ways to do the same edit. And this is just a little bit different way. So I had to kind of retain the bottom half of the the actual background because I would have lost that edge and I mean I guess I could have like gone in and painted around it and stuff but that I would it would have been messy so I kept the bottom half and I rebuilt the top half and kind of used the eraser tool um, to blend them together and it still looked weird and I'm still gonna reshoot this so I mean it's I guess it's good to kind of see how I'm using these tools um, how I'm using these adjustments and stuff um, so the hardness and this is how soft the edges are. Hardness of zero will mean that the um, edge of my brush is really fluffy and soft. And if a hardness of 100% is like, there's no fluffiness at all. So it's, the eraser would be really a sharp edge. Um, so for the, in this case, I'm using hardness zero. Um, and I completed that and I'm cropping it. And I'm adjusting the exposure a little bit because it, it just felt weird. But anyways, save it. And then I, you know, I'm going to move on to the next one in a minute. So 
All right. Yeah, you see, I end up going home for the day, and this is this is the third day of my edits because I was frustrated with it. But anyways, so this one was another, I, I think I ended up doing the background the same way as the first one, um, which was the fastest and the cleanest method. But So again, um, as I mentioned in the Lightroom portion of this video, I wanted the gray of the acetate to not get washed out with the background. The background, excuse me. Um, so this is going to take a little playing around to make sure that they look okay and they don't get washed out. Um, so I'm kind of using my um, magic wand tool over here. and Okay, now I'm using my eraser to get rid of everything. And again, the gradient tool to rebuild the background in a different layer. And... I'm going to be erasing these chopsticks and the armature that I had. I'm zooming in. And again, I mean, I'm sure you can see when I zoom in that these are pretty low quality um, acetate pieces. I'm not going to go in and, and fake that these are higher quality than they are. I'm sure you could, you know, make the um, lines look, you know, darker or this and that, but I'm not going to lie to my customers. I'm just going to remove what doesn't need to be there. So one of the things I'm going to do is the shadow of the chopstick that's through the acetate. I'm going to Photoshop out and I'll show you how to do that. This is pretty simple tools. Um, there's a little oopsie on the left. I don't know if you saw, I accidentally deleted part of the earring that I didn't mean to delete. So I end up using the background layer that I saved um, to rebuild that. So that was handy that I kept that. So I always like to duplicate my earrings just so I have that. So I'm using my clone stamp tool that works better in Photoshop than it does in Lightroom, as I mentioned before, um, to kind of paint. You know, I take a little swatch using the Alt tool and I paint back in. So I'm using the textures, the natural textures of the earring to remove that chopstick. So it should be pretty much gone once I'm done. You can't see it, so. And again, um, I'm gonna tighten these together, pull them closer. Oh, and I see that there was another layer where I rebuilt that bezel and I kind of goofed up, so I'm gonna have to edit that again. It's a little oopsie baby, but I'll fix it. But composition is key with making sure that you're using as much of your space as possible in your thumbnail. Um, so sometimes you have to be a little clever bouncing everything around, especially on Instagram. Um, I'm rebuilding my gradient. Again, I'm making it lighter so that the acetate stands out. Cropping it, saving it. I'm just about done, so. All right, so these are my favorite, and these had a very, I've already posted these to Instagram, and they've had a very positive response. These are the Pantone Color of the Year, Living Coral, um, obviously <laughs> the coral, um, coral unit, but um, same thing. Again, I know this is the same edit four times in a row, but maybe if you guys are trying to do something similar, seeing it, you know, the repetition hopefully can help you do something similar, so... And again, you can pause this video and, and see kind of what I'm doing and hopefully can copy this. So, and the chopsticks might not even be necessary for your earrings. That was just so I can, I, you know, I was clicking the camera with one hand and holding it up with the other. Um, and I don't know what happened here. That was a glitch, but, and you can use the eraser tool and then go in and just get rid of that stuff. So as you can see on the right hand side, I have those three layers. There's the gradient layer where I rebuilt that background, the earrings, which now have a transparent background, and then the background background layer, which is my original image. Um, and that's just hidden behind everything. And as mentioned before, I like to keep that data in case if I accidentally delete something that I shouldn't have, so I don't have to re-import the original image. Um, and again, I'm, I'm adjusting my composition. So Everything looks how I want it. All right, guys. Thank you so much for watching. I'm sorry that I started getting this. Is, it's a long video. <laughs> um, let me know if you like the longer videos or if that was droning on a little bit too much. Um, 
it still felt a little rushed to me. Um, I wasn't really going into explicit details on what I was doing. If you'd prefer, I could do talk live. Um, the problem, the reason I haven't done that yet is because sometimes with my edits, I will go through three or four edits and then change my mind. Like, I'm going to try this, try this and try that. And then it ends up being that I didn't like any of those edits and they didn't work. So sometimes it's better for me to just tell you what worked and show you what worked and kind of um, talk over what didn't work. But I don't know. We'll, we'll, we'll kind of feel this out together and you guys can critique me in the comments below and we can go on from there. Um, let me know if this length was droning and a little bit too much for y'all, if y'all prefer the 10 minute videos or if you liked it or if you'd like something longer. Um, I know the white background videos are heavily requested because that is something y'all use on Amazon and WooCommerce and all that kind of stuff and Shopify. But if you want to do something more stylized or I know people, some people want stuff for fine jewelry and all that kind of stuff. Um, just let me know. Drop, drop me a line in the comments. You can shoot me messages on Facebook. We have a Facebook group. I'm on Instagram. I'm everywhere. So just, just let me know. Um, if you aren't already, please subscribe. Uh, the subscriptions keep me going and your views help me, uh, help me keep going. So thanks again. Bye.